Nicely done from Vela. And there it is. Well, you always remember your first. Austin. And it's into the back of the net. There's only one Johnny Russell. Marios. Cross in front. Turned aside. Rudy cleans it up. Right for this. Picking up some space and finding the back of the net. Decision day. It all comes down to 90 minutes. Winter is coming and with it the Audi 2018 MLS Cup playoffs. But first, Decision Day presented by AT&T. A season's worth of drama boiled down into two hours as the regular season ends and the chase for the Philip F. Anschutz Trophy begins. Two playoff places remain unclaimed. Seating is liable to change throughout today, but the stakes here at Red Bull Arena, well, those are crystal clear. The Red Bulls already have a knockout round by. What they don't have and what they could have is their third supporter shield in six seasons. New York must win today against Orlando City, and they need a little bit of help from Toronto FC, who have Atlanta United in town. No matter what happens today, we're liable to see some history made. Perhaps a 70-point mark broken, maybe a new single-season point record. 2018 has been a good year, but it's going to get even better. For more from BMO Field, here's my partner in soccer, David Goss. Thanks, Andrew. Well, just like New York Red Bulls, Atlanta United looking to make history here today. With a win, their 2018 season point total would stand alone as the greatest in MLS history. Not only that, but in their final game with Tata Martino as a manager in MLS regular season, they're going to look to secure their franchise's first ever piece of silverware and they're going to try and show they can do it without injured talisman Miguel Almiron. On the other side, though, Toronto FC, this is their final day to play at Supporters Shield holders. Last year, they set the points record on the last day of the season in Atlanta against this Atlanta United squad. And as Eric Zavaleta said this week, last year we went into their building and we made history and they didn't like it very much. And this year, we're going to try and do everything we can to stop them. For more on Minnesota and Columbus, let's go to Julie Stewart-Binks. With the Columbus crew needing a win on the final day of the season to secure the last playoff berth in the East, head coach Greg Berhalter told me this is good stress, saying we control our own destiny, we need to do it together and have no regrets. He said this group has become closer and more resilient after having to deal with distractions over the last few months about the future of this team, discussing their concerns as a group, learning to lean into the uncomfortable, knowing that they can still be successful. But there are distractions looming about the future of Burhalter with the U.S. men's national team, something he told me he has not addressed with his players, trying to limit any more outside noise during a very pressure-filled time. Now for more from Gillette Stadium, let's send things over to Octavio Sequeira. Thank you, Yuli. We are so ready from Gillette Stadium on this MLS 2018 Decision Day presented by AT&T. My name is Octavio Sequeira. And let me tell you, folks, the story here is centralized on what could happen with the visitor team Montreal Impact, basically because they have to win. They need the three points and, of course, a little bit of good luck coming up from that match between Columbus Crew and Minnesota United. But talking about Montreal here, they have Ignacio Nacho Piatti with 16 goals and 13 assists. But wait a minute, two facts. They have won only three games on the road during this season. And last time they came here, they lost 4-0, 4 nothing, 4, nil, four against New England Revolution. So it's a pretty tough challenge for the Canadian team. Now let's send this over to Los Angeles with Brittany Hill, who is following the one and only Slatan Ibrahimovic. Go ahead, Brittany. Thanks, Octavia. Well, it is a beautiful day for some soccer here in Carson, California at the StubHub Center where the Galaxy will take on the Houston Dynamo. And the good thing for this Galaxy team is they are in control of their own destiny. Right now, they're seventh in the Western Conference, just one point behind RSL, who are currently in sixth with no remaining games to play. 
Bottom line, the Galaxy win today and they are in. And someone who's been a vital piece to this Galaxy success so far this season is Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Guys, when you look at his goals and his assists per 90 minutes, he is on track to have the single greatest season in MLS history. So should we cue the MVP talk or the MVZ talk that's been trending? Well, I got a chance to sit down with Landon Donovan, who we all know has had his fair share of decision day deciding matches in his career. And while he couldn't exactly endorse Zlatan for the Landon Donovan MLS MVP award, he did tell me that with a good performance tonight and the Galaxy securing a spot in the playoffs, it would be hard not to vote for him. So I'll toss it to you guys to our MLS. MLS studios in New York City where you can be that and so much more guys. Hey everybody welcome on into our MLS studios in New York City. It is decision day 2018 presented by AT&T and we have got you covered all day for a few teams. It all comes down to this. 11 games all starting at the same time. Joining me to set the stage today, we have former MLSer, U.S. Men's National Team member. What's up, everybody? Uh, YouTube sensation, AT&T influencer. Keep going. I, could I keep you going? Could, Jimmy Conrad. It's okay. Hey, everybody. How's Jimmy it going? Jimmy Conrad in studio. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure to I'm see you. I'm excited to be here. I, we're pumped to have you. And, of course, my partner in crime, former MLSer, host of the movement, my co-host of This Week in MLS, my good friend, Mr. Kalen Carr. Susanna, we've been waiting for this day. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's finally, made finally it, here. It. And of course, Mr. Matt Doyle, our armchair analyst and my fellow lover of musical theater. Which One, we've day been banning. One day more. One day more. One day more. Oh, God, you guys, it's already. Stop. We're already. It's too early. It's too early for this. <laughs> we are already off to a great start. All right, let's take a look at what is on the line today. And for these teams, one game remains to decide their playoff fate, guys. What do we think of some of these scenarios? We think that Greg Berhalter is doing the team talk and saying, just score a goal, just score one <laughs> freaking goal. That's what the Columbus crew need today. Well, you know, biggest day of the regular season and the biggest star probably in MLS, Zlatan Ibrahimovic in the West. Can he continue, get this team in the playoffs? RSL, nervous moments watching this one from home. Mm -hmm. No, these are both uh, very good games, but I'm more interested in the Supporters' Shield. Red Bull versus Atlanta United. Now, they're not playing against each other, but they are vying for this very significant trophy. So I'm excited to see who can pull it out. Not so just be very significant. Maybe I mean, the most significant? Doyle, I, to me, it's the best trophy. Doyle the loves the Supporters' yeah, Shield. Well, it is. If you win the Supporters' Shield, it means you gave your fans eight months of great soccer. So I, I think I agree it's with the you best trophy a fair point. Yeah, yeah, all agree. right, guys. Well, let's take a look at our full slate of games. Remember, all 11 games kicking off at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. What do we think of some of these matchups? Susanna, I'm looking at this one on top. Chicago, D.C. United. D.C. has been the story of the second half of the season for MLS. Already clinched their spot in the playoffs, but can actually get a home game at their brand new Audi Field back in D.C. So which is super nice. Huge, important match for them away in Chicago, which a bit of a tricky fixture because Chicago's playing well. Yeah, I can just stay on that theme. It's, it's NYCFC versus Philadelphia. NYCFC need a result in this one probably to get a home game. And if they don't get that, then their playoff appearance is going to be 90 minutes and out. All right, well, that's enough of the East. Let's go to the West because the West is best. I'm really focused on the Cascadia Cup rivalry, Vancouver versus the Portland Timbers, mainly because it's Alfonso Davies' last game here in MLS before he goes over to Bayern Munich. He is a, our young superstar in this league. I'm very excited to see what his future looks like, but I want to see how he plays in this game. There's a lot of nerves, I'm sure, attached to this. Standing, standing ovation for... No like, I hope so. From those fans. Yeah, yeah, 66 absolutely. minute. That's his number. They're going to stand up uh, and applaud him. Do you have some inside info that no, you've been holding no, out on I, us? Know, I'm following along. The hashtag, Farewell Fonzie. Oh, I yeah. love it. All right, well, guys, as we know, Decision Day has brought about some pretty incredible moments in years past. Who could forget last year, San Jose, Marco Irania? Hello. Uh, but I'm curious what you guys are looking forward to most today. Kaylin, I'm going to start with you. Columbus Crew SC. Uh, because, look, they have been trending the wrong direction. And, you know, we heard from Julie Stewart Binks in the pregame talk about uh, the distractions around the team and whether Greg Burhalter was going to be the next men's national team coach. Well, they have no time to look ahead because right behind them is the Montreal Impact. So I look for them to have a big rebound game at home and find some momentum trying to stay alive and stay in the playoffs. Going Go back out west. Jimmy's right. The west is the best. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Carson, California, man. Like, is Zlatan's the best player in the league. If he's the MVP, uh, if he is a god, which he says he is, <laughs> he's going to go out and prove it today in what's literally a must-win game for the Galaxy. If they, if they don't get the full three points, they're not going to the playoffs. 
playoffs, and that would be a huge hit for, for that franchise. And honestly, it, it would be kind of a hit for Zlatan, too. All right, I'm going to talk about the battle of the acronyms, SKC versus <laughs> LAFC, because I want to see if my Sporting Kansas City, my beloved Sporting Kansas City, can avoid the first round of the playoffs because they have lost their four consecutive years. If they get this win or even get a draw, they're going to they're gonna nail it and, and be top of the conference, or at least, yeah, they'll be top of the conference. Yeah. I was thinking the goal difference in my head. These are, these are two former coaches of yours. Did that, they did, are. Did Bob Bradley or Peter Vermees, you know, give you a call this week, weigh in? They did not. <laughs> that Conrad, but, but maybe they should have because yeah. I, I, I do know what I'm talking Would about. Would have helped our show. Yeah, for sure, 100%. Darn it. So that should, be a, that should be a very good game, and obviously Bob Bradley's done, done great with LAFC. So a lot of tactics there that I'm really curious to see. Great stuff. All right, well, right now we are going to send it over to our fifth member of the team today, Mr. Bobby Warshaw, manning the touch screen all day over there. Bobby, what are you looking forward to? What's up, guys? Because there's a trophy on the line, and I'm going to take the trophy. Atlanta United and Red Bull is both vying for it. But I love a good television drama. And remember, if Atlanta win in Toronto, that supporter shield is in the Toronto building. They will have to walk it out. They will have to hand it to Atlanta Come on, that'd be fun to watch. I'm not saying I'm cheering for Atlanta, but that'd be fun to watch. Yeah. Sounds, like, sounds like he's cheering for Atlanta. It does. Yeah, it does sound like <laughs> little bit, little bit. Well, you guys, it all comes down to today after a memorable 2018 season. But we want to know what was the best moment from the regular season. So go to our MLS Twitter account and vote. We've got the Rooney Acosta teaming up for one of the best goals of the year. That was awesome. That's the moment. Zlatan, That's 500th goal, career goal. El Trafico installment number one. And Joseph Martinez breaking. All kinds of records, guys. Any any thoughts? Initial El Trafico. thoughts? El Traf we were there together, Susanna. We were. It was amazing. That. Yeah. That's a full game, though. They're talking moments. You want, okay. So I, I, I would say the Rooney. Lu Lu I like Luchiru? the Rooney. Yeah, Lutru. I like Luchiru? that. Lutru? Yeah. The, the whole thing. Like, that it's was the whole amazing. play. I guess it's still a <laughs> bigger mean, the, play. There's like three moments in that. Yeah, they're all great. The fact that Joseph scored 30 goals this year and it's not the runaway winner, I mean, tells something about how great a year this it's is. It's starting to run away. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's an online poll with Atlanta fans, so. Yeah. No. I, I think right. we have an idea of what's going to win. <laughs> oh, my gosh, you guys, so much to get through in the next hour. Here is what we're going to dive into ahead of all 11 matches, some juicy storylines ahead of Decision Day 2018 presented by AT&T, including Alfonso Davies' final MLS game, as Jimmy mentioned. Of course, the race for the Supporters' Shield. Can Zlatan lead the Galaxy to the playoffs? And, of course, you guys, we want to hear from you, so we're going to be taking your fan questions. Get on Twitter. Tweet at Matt Doyle. He's been mm. getting lots of responses. Mm. <laughs> He's like, yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, don't forget, we'll be right back here after all is said and done. We're going to wrap it all up. Our decision day by day presented by AT&T Post Game Show. That is at 7 p.m. Eastern. You don't want to miss it. So like, now let's take it back out to Carson, California, for a live look in from our AT&T Stadium Cam at StubHub Center. Let's see what's going on in, in SoCal. Just kidding. I was just kidding. <laughs> Camera didn't work. Sometimes it happens, guys. Carson's beautiful. Live. This Carson, Carson is wow. Isn't what a, it? Isn't it's an it? amazing job here. It's gorgeous. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, guys, beautiful. all week we have asked you to make your picks for AT&T's winning 11. You pick the winners of all 11 matches on Decision Day 2018, presented by AT&T. You can have a chance to win some really great prizes. And uh, who better to reveal their picks than Mr. AT&T himself? Jimmy Conrad. Jimmy, who you got today? Well, you're going to take a look here at the screen. Those are the ones that I picked to win. I got DC United, Columbus, the Galaxy, Red Bulls, Sounders, Sporting Kansas City, and the Vancouver Whitecaps. Uh, and then the other games are going to be a draw. So you're picking the Red Bulls to win the Shield? I am picking wow. the Red Bulls to win the Shield. Yeah. Huh? Bold, bold. Yeah, I'm going against uh, Mr. Big Pants over there, Bobby Woodshaw. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto fan over there. <laughs> Atlanta fan. Wait, you want an Atlanta fan? You're an Atlanta fan now. I just want drama. I just want to see Michael Bradley hand it to Michael Parker. That's fair. Come I, on, respect that. I respect that. I respect that. I think I like, we all want that. I like a little bit of pettiness. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah pettiness is good. Yeah. All right. Well, for us. Jimmy, while we have you here, I know you've been doing some pretty cool work for uh, for AT and T. Will you please tell us all oh, about it? Oh, you mean AT and T? Hey. Yes. So I have been doing uh, a lot of fun stuff with them. They had an activation where they did uh, 11 events in 11 cities, leading up to the 11 days to Decision Day. And um, what what I did was pickup games. So I got to get in there with the community and, and get around and have some fun. Dominate some people, apologies. <laughs> and then actually I should thank everybody for letting me win. So that was great to get involved. We also had activations where players would come out, do autograph sessions, uh, store appearances by Mariano Trujillo and Indy Cowie. We were also 
involved with AT&T. So it was great. And, and building up to this event was very special because I think this is the best day of the regular season. There's so much going on, the intrigue, the pettiness, mm -hmm. the drama, that everything that we want happens now, and it all happens at the same time, which I think makes it very I, I got to ask you this, because you're a former World Cup defender, right? He, he was out there against Pirlo and against Totti and, you know, against mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. World Cup champion sure. Italian national team. Um, so obviously you could bring it to a pretty high level when you need to. When you're going out there <laughs> in these activations, playing, you know, Sunday league <laughs> players, how much of the real Jimmy Conrad do they get? Uh, that's a great question. In other words, how many red cards were handed out? No, 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 no red cards were handed out. When I, when I play in these games, mm -hmm. if I start to lose, I get a little testy. Yeah. Like that, that competitiveness starts to come out because I don't get to exercise that anymore. Mm -hmm. Now that I don't play, mm -hmm. I don't get to scratch that itch. So when these pickup games allow me to fill that void in my life. <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, when, when I do lose, and then when somebody starts to run their mouth, then I start to maybe ratchet it up. So wait, bit. people talk trash to you. Oh, of course they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I sh we should also note that Jimmy has reinvented himself as a number 10. I, I've seen a couple of these now. So this <laughs> Well, they don't call me Conradinho is... for nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Conradinho, yeah. that's right. That's optional. A, <laughs> I was always a closet attacking midfielder in my yeah. mind. And Kalen so. was a closet sweeper, so I mean, it, it kind of worked out. <laughs> Well, there you go. Further back it's in all there. about reinvention. It is, it is. Also, do want to mention that people can sign up still for the Winning yes, 11. Yes, you can. You guys, winning11 you have until game time. You have up until game time, and then if you win, you go to MLS Cup. Everything is being paid for, which is great. And then I'll be there so we can high-five or fist bump or whatever you guys like to do. It'll be, it'll be great. Be and, you, and you can do more than one. You can do up to five. I'm, I only did one because I know I'm going to get all of them right. I'm just saying. Oh my He's gosh. that confident. You guys, look at this no, face. no lack of egos in this room. All right, guys, let's take a look at the Western Conference standings. As we look at that playoff line, though, it's a Galaxy who are in control of their own playoff fate. They're going to try to knock out RSL from that sixth spot as they take on Houston. And at the top, it's Sporting KC and LAFC duking it out for that one seed. But right now, let's talk about Sporting Kansas City. Jimmy, you talked about it earlier in the show, their, their struggle in the playoffs as of as of recently what makes you believe that this could possibly be a team that could change that trend there seems to be more of a belief at this time of the season it seems like in the last four years they hit this kind of downward spiral during the stretch run and they don't seem to have that right now they seem mm -hmm. to be playing better they seem to have a little bit more belief uh, they're making the plays that they need to make and you need a hot goalkeeper you need a hot goal scorer that are making the plays at the right time and i think they're doing that right now so i'm hopeful they can just skip this whole first round, so the curse just goes away. They can just jump. I think right it's straight up one. depth, right? Like, sure. like if you look over the past like three or four years, Peter Vermees had guys he trusted and guys he didn't, and he would ride the guys that they trusted until uh, until they broke, and they were terrible from August onwards. And this year, they have depth up top, they have depth on the wing, they have depth in midfield sure. as well. But you have to wonder though, because he had different personnel in those four different years. He was trying to tinker so much. I don't know. I mean, you can put it on the players, but also at some point, I think you have to take a look at yourself and say, all right, what am I not doing, right? And I think Peter's one of the best in the business to say, hey, raise my hand, own my mistake, we got to get better, and he tries to actively go pursue that. And so I respect that a lot about him. They had one game against Vancouver where they were down 1-0 at halftime a couple weeks ago, mm. made some changes, brought in some depth. Kyrie Shelton came off the bench. Uh, Johnny Russell, Shalloway come in and change this team. And when you look at the goals for, they're one of the top three goal scoring teams in the Western Conference. We know about the back line, Tim Melia, Alpara, all these guys that are still there. But the difference has actually been a, a wealth of options in the mm -hmm. attack to be able to give them some a uh, little bit more venom. Going you forward. specifically mentioned Daniel Shalloway on this week in MLS. You said that you thought he was going to be a big factor for them. Just the 22 place. years old. Yeah. 22 years old, homegrown player, 10 goals. Jimmy, you know, that's a big mark for, for a young player, especially. It's, it's not easy to do that in MLS. He hasn't always started. He's come in, and he's gotten stronger as the season has gone on as well. Mm -hmm. I would add timely goals, right? There's something to be said if you have 10 goals and five of them are tap-ins or it's at 3-1, to one, you make it 4-1. Sure. to one. Atlanta he's scoring, Yeah, he's scoring goals that are making difference. Either they're tying the game or they're giving the lead, and that's – you can't teach that, mm -hmm. you know, having that ability to, to step up and concentrate in those key moments. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about LAFC. In their inaugural MLS season, they're fighting for that number one seed. It's pretty incredible. On record for the most number of wins for an expansion side. So when we talk about the conversation of best expansion teams ever, where do you see LAFC fitting within that conversation, guys? Jimmy, I Am I going you. first? I'm looking at you. Oh, man. I'm I mean, looking I think, at you. I think first and foremost, you have to compare them to Bob Bradley's first team okay. in MLS, the Chicago Fire in 1998. And I think the strongest point they have going for them is that they won the double that season. 
there's only 12 teams in the league, and there was a lot of talent on each team, and I think they won, they won the sweepstakes in signing players, including specifically, let's say, uh, Peter Novak, yeah. who was excellent. And Lubos Kubik. And Lubos Kubik, who yeah. was dynamite. Awesome. You couldn't get the ball off of him either, yeah. and, and Roman Kosecki was another one. And yeah. just, so it's just a ton of guys that were good professionals, and I thought they also got Demarcus Beasley and Carlos mm -hmm. Bocanegra and Ante Razov, Chris, Chris Armis. Armis. Yeah. I mean, the list just goes was, on and on and on. They were stacked. They were stacked. That's the best. That's the best expansion team of all time, no matter what LAFC do throughout the rest of the year, because they won two trophies, and trophies mm -hmm. are what. That's what matters. So I think since then, you look at the 2009 Sounders, they weren't as good in the regular season as LAFC have been, but they won the Open Cup. Um, and I think that, like, no matter what happens this game and into the playoffs, this LAFC team is really good, and they're going to be really good next year, and Bob Bradley deserves a ton of credit. But if you want to be mentioned with those two teams, got to win something. If they win MLS Cup, they have to be mentioned with the of the best all time, partly because it's such a harder league now. There's only 10, 12 teams around that time. So if he's able to do this, Bob Bradley, this would be one of the best accomplishments of his career. And I think sometimes we actually are undervaluing how impressive LAFC have done, partly because Atlanta came in and made it look so easy last year that you take it for granted that an expansion team can come in and have success right away. It's not an easy task, especially yeah, in a Western Conference. Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, it's not easy for a lot of these teams coming in. So uh, it's been incredible what they've been able to do. And I want to give credit to Bob as well because I thought he's done a very good job of letting Benny Falhaber and Lee Wynn drop a little bit off and more, be more deep-line playmakers. And I think that's made a big difference for their team, especially as they transition from defense to attack. All right, well, let's check in with our fifth team member, Mr. Bobby Warshaw, who's standing by at the board. What do you got for us over there? Guys, let's talk about how the game is going to go down today. And both these teams are teams that like to use the ball. And when you like to use the ball, what you're trying to do is pull defenders out of position so you can then exploit the space. And here we see for SKC, that's Kyrie Shelton, their center forward. When he comes off the back line, it brings an opponent, an opposing center back off of his back line. And when that happens, it leaves space for his teammates to exploit. And this is what SKC try and do. They try and pull a center back out. And when that center back comes out, they try and hit the gaps in between the center backs. But LAFC do it a little differently. Here's LAFC and their center striker, Adama Diamande. And Diamande doesn't really come off the center backs the way that uh, Kyrie Shelton or Marco Urena does. He stays in between them. He's more goal dangerous. And in staying between them, he forces the two center backs to stay tighter. When the center backs stay tighter, it creates this space in between the center backs and the outside backs. And guys, if you watched LAFC all year, you know what comes next. It's Diego Rossi coming in from that left channel, the wide inside run back towards goal, and when you've got Carlos Vela, Carlos Vela is going to make that pass, so that's the difference today. You've got an SKC team that's going to use Kyrie Shelton to try and pull the center backs out and then go in between the center backs, whereas LAFC will use Diamande to pin the center back central and try and hit Diego Rossi or Aaron Kovar coming in between the center backs and the outside backs. Guys, a small detail, but that's why these teams are at the top of the West. When you're at the top fighting for trophies, it's the small things that count. Yeah, and two goal-scoring wingers on, on each side. You talked about Shalloway. That highlight was Diego Rossi. They, both these teams get a lot of goals from those wingers diving inside, and it's all about how those center forwards clear space for those guys. Absolutely. I feel smarter today, so thank you for that, Bobby. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Bobby's good at that board. Yeah, very good. And we're, that's why we're going to send it back over to him, because we've got, uh, we've got some lineups. Yeah. Am I right? We do. Let's, let's start, break it down. Let's start with LAFC, guys. And... LAFC, ooh, coming out a little unpredictable. We have the diamond set up right now. It might be a diamond. It might also be Carlos Vela on the right, Diamande central, Rossi left, Wynn, Failhaber, probably Failhaber a little higher with Atuesta behind. Now, I'm skeptical of this. It's a little different than we've seen with Atuesta on the bench and Carlos Vela in front of Failhaber and Lee Wynn, mostly because the team is much better when Carlos Vela is central. Today, it's likely he's going to start on the right. Maybe they go diamond, but guys, I suspect it's a 4-3-3 with Carlos Vela on the right, and they just haven't been as good when he's wide opposed to central. I mean, I, I, would, I would nitpick that a little bit because I, I think they have had some really good games with him on the right. I do think 100% it's not going to be a diamond. It'll be interesting to see how Atuesta um, integrates back into the squad. He missed the last, like, three games or so, had a concussion. Uh, but he was coming along pretty well mm -hmm. throughout September at this point. If, they, if he looks like what he was then, I think it elevates LAFC because he's not like a – 
Ozzy Alonso type of defensive midfielder, um, but he's a better ball winner there than either Failhaber or Wynn. Gives him a little bit of solidity in front of that back line um, and maybe allows them a few more transition opportunities. All right, what about Sporting KC, Bobby? Yeah, this is what we've known to expect from them the last few weeks. The big decision point is Kyrie Shelton or Diego Rubio up top. They go with Kyrie Shelton. Like we, like we just pointed out, more for his play to help his teammates. What you'll see often, Kyrie Shelton coming back. Felipe Gutierrez going in, Daniel Shalloway going in. The other point to look out today is the overloads on the right side of the field. Johnny Russell will get joined by Graham Zuzzi and Roger Espinoza. They'll try and put three players compared to LAFC's, LAFC's two, go 3v2 wide. Kansas City, this is pretty much a lineup we know they're putting out their best squad today. Yeah. What I find interesting about Kansas City is I think they're better when Zuzzi gets involved or more involved going forward. But Johnny Russell, I think – kind of stunts him a bit because when he likes to get the ball, he wants to run at people and take people on. Now, obviously, if Zussi's running around him, it's going to create a little bit more space. But I don't know if Zussi wants to like interfere with what he wants to try to do because Johnny Russell's a little bit um, unpredictable with how he likes to move. So I think Zussi needs to get involved as much as possible. They flow better. The, the team seems to attack with more purpose when he gets up, up, up and going. But uh, So I'll be interested to see that, that relationship in particular. And then just overall, the numerical advantages. Where are they trying to gain those? And it seems like LAFC, with that lineup, though you adjusted it a little bit, looks like they're trying to get maybe a 4v3 or a 3v2, a lot of 3v2s in the middle of the park. So we'll see what ends up happening. Interesting stuff. All right, you guys, let's take it out east. Montreal in New England sitting just below that playoff line. There's a look in at Gillette Stadium. A win and Columbus loss would send Montreal through. And now we're going to take a look at L.A. Houston. As we said, L.A. playing for their playoff lives, essentially a win, and they are in, you guys. What, what's going to be the key for them today to make this happen? Uh, keeping a, a steady back line, you know, and, and to not give up goals. The, the biggest difference between this, uh, this L.A. Galaxy team and the one before has been uh, their defensive commitment and, and just simplifying some of the things. You know, th there's nobody you'd want to bring in other than Dom Kinnear at this point in the season. Uh, you know, a guy I play for, it's a little bit strange to see him on the Galaxy side against Houston in L.A., so I I'm still coming to terms with that. But, I mean, you can't say enough about what he's mm -hmm. been able to do as far as just to simplify the task at hand. And turns out Alessandrini's not a right back. He's a left winger. He changes his two most expensive center backs, puts in a couple guys that, you know, maybe don't have the biggest name or profile or, or transfer value, but are guys that have just rolled up their sleeves and, and done some hard work. And then Leggett and Dos Santos have been fantastic in the middle of midfield. And that, it also helps at times when you need an escape route to go up to uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. So oh, that guy. It, it's, it's really clicking for them. I think if you're a team in the West, you're looking down and saying, I, I hope they slip up today. I need Kyoto or at least to find a moment because well, you do not want to face this galaxy. Speaking of Zlatan, here is a look at the 2018 best-selling MLS jerseys. Of course, Zlatan right there in that number one spot. Do, do any of these surprise you? Guys, these are pretty big names. No, this, I'm this not all sure. makes sense. I mean, credit to Joseph for, for playing his way into the, into the top five because when he was signed a year and a half, two years ago, he was kind of an unknown and he's been uh, spectacular. So seeing him amongst Wayne Rooney, Carlos Vela, Zlatan Ibrahimovic doesn't feel out of place at all. Is it true, Doyle, that you have Zlatan's jersey on your pillow? <laughs> no, I have, a, I, have a, <laughs> I have a 2005 Jimmy Conrad, Kansas City Wizards, oh, there Defender you go. of the Year there yeah. you go. trophy. I feel the head. We just can hang out anytime. <laughs> anytime. <laughs> I love it. All well, right, now that was for an more. Activation for Jimmy's ego. <laughs> Guys, for more on the Galaxy, we are going to send it out to StubHub Center, where Brittany Held is standing by with Ola Kamara. Guys, here with Ola Kamara. Ola. Zlatan has said that you guys have really been under pressure for the last four or five games. Obviously, today is the last game of the season. On decision day, got to get a dub. How important is this match compared to some of the other must-win games that you guys have had so far this season? I think, I think of course, the, the pressure is big, but we're used to it now. It's been like playoff mode for four or five games now, and I think, I think we're ready, we're sharp, and I think, of course, the pressure, the pressure is there, but... We're excited about it, you know, uh, and uh, this is a big one. What do you need to see from the guys today in order to secure a win? I think we have to be solid defensively and we have to be or attack well. Uh, I think at home we, we always score a goal, so I think uh, if we're able to keep the donut, then it's good. Awesome. Good luck today. Yeah, thank you. Now let's take a look at the Galaxy. First of all, Ola Kamar, love the hat, guys. Yeah. I, I can't love the, 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 the style getting strong. Denim jacket, the outfit. Hat. 
Got to give him props for that. But let's talk about the lineup next. And just like we talked about with SKC going with the lineup we're used to seeing, this is the lineup that the Galaxy have adopted the last few games. And the big talking points are, one Zlatan up top, and Ola Kamara, it's listed as a 4-2-4-2-4-4-2, sorry, 4-4-2 or 4-3-3, but it's really a 4-4-1-1 with Ola Kamara in behind Zlatan, Alessandrini and Boateng on the wings, and Romney and Steer is at center back. Pretty standard lineup from what we've seen. Yeah, and just to touch upon what Kaylin said earlier, you know, bringing two center backs, this is a Dom specialty with these two guys, getting hardworking players to do, do the job. Yep. And I think what they've done in particular is, with these two guys, is just kept everything in front of them. They drop a little bit deeper. We're going to see it here in a little bit that I think we would all prefer. But it makes it a lot easier. There's no space in behind them, and it keeps everybody organized. And I think that's a big reflection of why they've done so well defensively. All right. Take we'll a look at Houston. Houston's tougher to predict compared to some of the other teams. Possibly while they're not in the playoffs, they don't really have 11 star players or 11 playoff quality guys, but this also to be expected. And the big thing to watch today, these two guys in the wing, Albert Elise and Romel Kyoto attacking the flanks. Galaxy, listen, they haven't given up many goals, but it's still not a great defending team. There's still gaps to be had in that squad. So keep an eye on the two wingers, Elise and Kyoto, running at the Galaxy. Yeah, for me, I just want to see DeMarcus Beasley play one more time. we got to appreciate this guy before he doesn't play anymore. That might be 10 more years, but yeah. we don't know yet. We'll wait the ageless see. wonder. He is amazing. Um, all right, so guys, question. If the Galaxy lose this game, is it more a reflection on them as a team or on Zlatan? Who does this affect more? I mean, if, if they lose this game and they don't make the playoffs, it does reflect on both to some level, but this is much more an organizational failure than it is a Zlatan Ibrahimovic failure. They spent more money on their defense than any other team in the league. They have a DP in, in Jonathan Dos Santos who is supposed to be the, you know, one of the best box-to-box -box midfielders in the league and has only started to look like it the past month, month and a half. They have a guy in Alessandrini who, as Jimmy said, is one of the best left wingers in the league who was playing at right back. It's an organizational failure from top to bottom. Um, that said, I, it like, look, you, you don't forget about it. it. Like Zlatan's the best player on the team. If his team doesn't make the playoffs, yeah, it does reflect on him somewhat. Absolutely. Yeah, he, there's, there's really nothing you can say about this guy so far. I, I, first of all, I think this is a little bit hyperbole because they're going to get in the playoffs. I think they're going to win this game. Uh, and look, but look at the stats: 22 goals, 10 mm -hmm. assists. Seven of them have been game winners in 26 matches. When they were defense was shipping goals, he was doing great escapes. He was scoring two, three at times, uh, like that first game against LAFC. And then now that is more, you know, structured. He's able to, you know, score a couple, but he has like five in his last seven. He's really carried this team throughout yeah, the last, season. Yeah, last seven games, he has seven goals, three assists. I am with you. I think they're absolutely going to win this game. They're absolutely going to get to the playoffs. Um, but if they don't, um, at least a little bit of that shade goes to Big Z. At least a little bit. <laughs> well, one thing that has been going right for L.A. as of late, which was not the case earlier on in the season, their defense under Dom Kinnear, they've been doing so much better than they had done previously. So to break that down, we well, are sending it back over to the board. <laughs> we have just the graphic for that, guys. <laughs> if we look here, they went on a four-game span at one point and gave up 17 goals. Let that sink in for a second. 17 divided by, is that four goals a game? Yeah, whatever, not, whatever you break it down math-wise, they look like traffic cones. Yeah, to say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can't make that. Your defender of the year. Now can make look at them. They're not traffic cones anymore. <laughs> the last four games, only given up two. And I went through a ton of tape to get a good breakdown for the Galaxy, and they're not doing anything overly complicated. They haven't made huge adjustments. I would say the biggest thing has been the personnel and the center backs, Daniel Steer, or Daniel Steeres and Dave Romney, and then also the center midfielders, Sebastian Legette and Jonathan Dos Santos. These are two partnerships where they they just get more out of each other. They understand each other. They're style styles mesh, and it lifts the individual performances. Yeah, with these two midfielders in particular, I feel like they're both looking to make plays to transition the team. Yep. So they're always anticipating. They're always sniffing out plays and ways to, to get the ball back and get it to Zlatan as soon as possible. Yep, which is a good thing. The other addition in the lineup has been Ima Boateng. Boateng is a hardworking guy. He does a selfless work, whereas the Galaxy earlier in the year didn't really have someone to do the dirty work for the other guys. That's now Boateng. Yeah, what I love about Boateng in particular is you need a few players on your team that you know what you're going to get from them mm -hmm. every time they step on the field, and he's one of those players. And this is the last point to make, the last adjustment. They've dropped Ola Kamar behind Zlatan. Remember the first 15, 20 games of the year? It was Zlatan as number 10 because it makes sense. He's a playmaker, he's good on the ball, and Ola Kamar is a true number 9. Well, what they've done is put Kamar behind Zlatan. Now Kamar chases the defensive midfielder. He does the hard work while Zlatan 
saves his energy pretty much. I mean, he has to, right? He's, he's not getting any younger. He's not yeah. a spring chicken. You want him to save that energy for, for the big plays when they're needed. But it is interesting sometimes the gaps. I still feel like they're a little bit too yep. deep. Well, the one thing they try and do to avoid those gaps, the biggest tactical adjustment they've made is this. When they lose the ball, they've been trying to win the ball back right away. Whereas earlier in the year, if they lost it, it was somebody yelling at somebody else. They put their heads down and the other team would just fly down the other way. This time we see a Sounders player gets on the ball, bang, here comes a Galaxy defender. Sounders player gets on the ball, here comes a Galaxy defender. The Galaxy just have so much more energy. They transition so much better, and we can see what it's done for their defense. No, and I think in particular, we, we could argue Argue, the most important part about defending is a willingness to defend yep. and I think we're seeing that now they've hit a switch they believe in what Dom's saying their compactness and it's making a big difference yep, and it's funny that even just having that willingness can make your team so much better but we should add Jimmy and I've talked about this a lot a lot we like what we liked what they've done <laughs> but neither of us feel super confident in their shape so we're not quite we don't feel quite as good about them winning today's game they're still probably gonna win but I don't have it at the it's gonna be tight yeah, that's, it's going to be That's what we agreed upon. Uh -huh. Really tight. Uh huh. Great stuff from our resident defenders. Um, well, one thing's for sure RSL is going to be on the edge of their seats watching this one, knowing that their fate is ultimately out of their hands. How difficult of a position is that to be in? I see, I see Jimmy kind Man, of looking at me with It's brutal, eyes. but but to be honest, they've had their opportunities. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the last three weeks, they had a home and away, essentially, mm -hmm. playoff series against Portland to have a chance to control their own destiny. They didn't take it. Not only did they not take it, but they lost by three goals in each match. Yeah. I mean, it's how I felt watching Bobby and Jimmy at the board right there. I was like, <laughs> what, what have I done <laughs> letting them go up there and make a mess oh, of Doyle. this beautiful Galaxy oh, team? Oh, oh, well, check this out. This is, I mean, <laughs> Jimmy, this is just for you, basically. Here we are. Back, back in October 16, 2005, the yeah. Metro Stars. I mean, wow. there's a lot of things to, to, to think about Knocked here. Michael Bradley down. with hair is one of the things you have to note. <laughs> But yeah, we were at home, Kansas City Wizards. We needed Chivas USA to win this game at the Home Depot Center at the time, and they didn't do it. So we know exactly how Real Salt Lake is going to feel. I'm still bitter about this game. I'm actually quite depressed that you brought this up. <laughs> this was unexpected. Oh, yeah. oh man. Might need a longer one. They're hugging. Later. More talking. But yeah, it's, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't want to be Salt Lake right now. It, it's... Having to rely on other people to get the results for you is never a fun place. I mean, especially are you watching Chivas. together? Are you watching together? Are you stress eating? Like <laughs> there was some stress eating. I, yeah. I would be stress eating. I, mean, I tried eating to block like this part out when you're bringing up some feelings. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's stress eating. There's you know on the phone. Can you believe it? What is Chivas doing? But yeah, there was a bunch of us watching it together and. A lot of choice expletives that I cannot repeat. Oh, it's going to be okay. But they have to no, stay locked in, though, as far as training goes, mm -hmm. because they've had a long week of training, uh, knowing that they don't have a match this weekend, but they could turn around and have to play on Wednesday. So there, there's no time to wonder what if or feel sorry for yourself or mm -hmm. feel down because you might have to turn and flip the switch and next thing you know you're in the playoffs. Anything can happen if you get in. Anything can happen, you guys. All right, well, right now, let's take a live look from our AT&T Stadium cameras. We've got them everywhere today. Look at that Children's Mercy Park looking beautiful. We're out there in Chicago, Vancouver, Toronto. You guys, if you're just joining us, it all comes down to this. It's Decision Day 2018 presented by AT&T. Who is in? Who is out? It's all going to be decided today. All 11 games kicking off at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. There's the man right there, Alfonso Davies, his final MLS game. We're hoping. What's the hashtag? Farewell, Fonzie. Farewell, Fonzie. BMO looking good. You know, BMO is a lot better looking when it's not negative 50 degrees. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to say that as somebody who no, has been there the last No, we won't have to go back there for, for a I know. I didn't want to rub it into <laughs> the Toronto fans, but I'm not entirely heartbreaking that we won't be returning yeah, there in mid-December. Yeah. It's been... <laughs> they, they did two in a row. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, good good, good, good for them. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, here is what's on the live playoff spots up for grabs in the East. Columbus and Montreal hoping it all goes their way. And in the West, it's the Galaxy. As we mentioned, they're going to try to take care of business against Houston and knock RSL, who have to sit and watch this one, out of that sixth spot. And, of course, the Supporters' Shield. Will Atlanta collect their first piece of hardware and break the points record, or will it be the Red Bulls who take home the Shield for the third time we will soon find out. You guys, buckle up. It is Decision Day 2018, presented by AT&T. But for a closer look at the day, here are our good friends, Rob Stone, to break it down. Decision Day. It's all or nothing. A season of trials and tribulations. It all comes down to 90 minutes. Each conference has six playoff spots to play for. 
the top two seeds get a first round bye. And seeds three through six face off in a one game knockout. All that matters is that you get in. So what will happen this year? All we know is that 12 teams will be left standing and only one of them will win MOS Cup. Decision day. It is all or nothing. Get in. All right, well, earlier we asked you guys to weigh in on the best moment of the 2018 MLS season in our poll. Here are the results so far. Let's, ooh, a tight one between Lucha Roo and El Trafico. I don't disagree. Also, Zlatan's 500th in there. Oh, wait, no, what am I doing? I'm looking. I thought you maybe were like, I was like, going, no, second. what is going the on? The second. Way. Wait, you guys, this is Atlanta fans <laughs> going crazy. They yeah. always do this. I mean, it is a record. They're, it was um, incredible. They're amazing. They really get in there. I'd Caleb, feel more comfortable if it was the stare down after the goal. Oh, I want that yeah. to have its own separate chance to win. To be what fair. did you think? What did you think of him taking off the jersey and then, like, you know, like had the? Didn't he have the the number on? Yellow card. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can't do that anymore. I, I just yeah. You, I mean, you know the rules? Listen. There are rules. Susan. Come on, let's get El Trafico back oh, up there. That was so I'm getting getting I feel like if you score 30 goals, you're you're allowed to to shed the jersey. I agree. I didn't have a problem no with it. Card. I really didn't. Oh my gosh, you guys. Uh, we've got a post game show coming up after all the action today. That is going to be at. 7 p.m. Eastern, so join us. You don't want to miss it. We're going to break it all down, all the drama, and look ahead to the 2018 Audi MLS Cup playoffs. It's going to be great. We also have the winning 11 mm. that you guys can still enter, so that's you can yes. do that at thewinning11.com, guys. So, and you, you can enter more than once. Yes, you can enter five more times. than once. Do it. Everything do paid it, for. Do it, one, do of it. The, one of the prizes is everything paid for to get MLS Cup. Mm -hmm. Get to hang out with me. I'll be there. Fantastic. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> <laughs> what a prize. <laughs> well, no doubt about it. One of those exciting players in MLS has been Vancouver's Alfonso Davies, who at just 17 years old has electrified the league and topped our list of 22 under 22. And as he gets ready for his final MLS appearance before heading to German club Bayern Munich next season, we're going to take a look back at what makes Alfonso Davies such a special player. Open things up for Davies. Great move by Davies. Oh, this will be something. Oh, oh, oh it. Vancouver means a lot to me. The city that probably made me the man I am today. Uh, my second home. Vancouver is a beautiful, beautiful city. The fans are amazing. The team, team's really good. Coming through, living in Vancouver, my, most of my, my soccer career is it's amazing. Well, what a moment this is. On comes 15-year-old Alfonso Davies. The most memorable was when I scored my first MLS goal. I mean, it wasn't the prettiest goal, but I got it over, I got it over with after a whole season without me scoring. And to score my first goal was a, a big weight off my shoulder. take some time to savor the moment. Uh, probably go for walks more often. <laughs> uh, probably go see most of the attractions now because uh, I know um, I'm not going to be here anymore for a while. Well, this one's going to be beamed across the TV sets in Munich here. Great stuff. All right, well, let's move it along to the battle for that sixth and final playoff spot in the East. We have Columbus taking on Minnesota. Columbus, of course, coming off a pretty deflating loss last week to Orlando. They could have punched their ticket to the playoffs, but that is not what has happened. It's a crazy situation that they're in because they were pretty much sitting comfortably in fourth place for the most of this season. But now, they only have one win in their last five games. What's going on? What's going on with Columbus, guys? I, I can't even believe that they're in this position, to be honest. Uh, you look a couple weeks ago, they lost away to Montreal, and you say, oh, maybe it's a fluke. And they'll, you'll, you know, they'll clinch it next week for sure in Orlando. And they go down, you know, international break, yeah, they had players step away, and there's a lot of talk around the team, but this is not an inexperienced side. This is a group with the starting U.S. men's national team goalkeeper, uh, guys, Will Trapp's been captaining center midfield. And experience of Greg Berhalter, you wouldn't expect a team to have these sort of mental lapses like we saw in Orlando giving up cheap penalties late in the game. That's put them in this position. I think part of it is that their attack has been 
bad. Their attack has not been productive over the last couple of months. They're the second lowest scoring team in the league over the course of the year. And I think that has just added more pressure on top of the defense and on top of the goalkeeper. And maybe what we saw last week was them starting to, to crack a little bit. Because I think both penalties they gave up uh, were unnecessary and put them in a position here where they got to treat this like a must-win game. Like they could get in with some help from New England, but New England hasn't been helping themselves. They're not going to help anybody this week. This is this is all on the field stuff you're talking about, but yeah. off the field, they've been dealing with this Save the Crew stuff for a long time. And there was some resolution. There's some kind of resolution, or there's still a lot of up in the air, and that's got to take its toll on you. And then then Greg Berhalter is dealing with some stuff as well. Is he going to be the coach? Has he been holding on to that secret for months now, and it's finally coming out? I mean. That, maybe that's part of it as well. It's just it's and a lot they, of toil, mental toil. What they need is, is one guy in that attack to step up and to actually... Release and, the pressure? Yeah, <laughs> release the pressure. Like, like, and that's what they got Justin Miram for. And I thought it was a great move to get Justin Miram back. And if they can help him rediscover the player he was for the first half of last year and the couple of years before that, then we're not having this conversation three hours from now. Yeah. But if Justin Miram doesn't go out there and play like what we know he's capable of, we, we could talk about this Columbus team the same way we talked about Dallas last year. And he wasn't able to play last weekend right. in Orlando City due to a rule uh, or an agreement between the clubs when the trade happened for him to come back to Columbus. So he'll be ready to try and make an impact. We haven't seen his best as of late, but at this time of year, Jimmy, if you can get one goal on decision day or the playoffs, it can change the trajectory of your entire season confidence and and sort of put this nightmare of a season behind him. All I, have right. a, a few, I have a few forwards that are, that were on my team that didn't score the goals that they should have. Wow. I would have been like a seven-time champion, I think, if they would have wow. done that. Instead, only won one MLS Cup. At them, Throwing at dudes them. under the bus. I mean, maybe I didn't make plays back. either. It's fine. <laughs> no. It's fine. It goes both ways. Oh, my goodness. It's getting dark <laughs> over here. Thunder's never <laughs> making mistakes. <laughs> no, never. Yeah. It's okay. a goalkeeper's fault. Yeah. Guys, all right, for more on Columbus, let's send it out to Julie Stewart Binks, who is standing by with Will Trap. Will, you said your team this week had a lot of fight. Where did that initiate and how has it manifested itself? I think it's manifested itself in the training. Um, I mean, I think truly it, it's, it's been a wonderful week of training and preparation for what is an, an elimination game for us in a lot of ways. So um, it, the fight comes from just understanding what is at stake and, and then going out on the field and, and putting forth the right mentality, the right attitude and, and stepping onto the field to win a game. There's been a lot of off-field distractions this year. As a Columbus native, as yeah. a member of this team, what do you expect from the crowd here today and the players in this must-win game? I think there's going to be a, a good environment in terms of the chemistry of us on the field as well as the fans in the stadium, understanding that there's a lot to be hopeful for, a lot to be excited about, and um, we hope to give them a show on the field. Thanks so much, Will. Congratulations. Appreciate it. You guys, and we have a decision point on the crew lineup. Greg Berhalter making a big change coming to the last game. We see it right here. Nico Hansen in at right wing. Pedro Santos, who's been an everyday starter pretty much at least all year, is out. Santos just hadn't been delivering, and they need more out of their wingers. The star player today needs to be Justin Miram. You know what you're going to get out of Will Trapp. You know what you're going to get out of Arthur and people you're going in. But Justin Miram hasn't been himself in 2018. He tried to go to Orlando. It didn't work out. They need him to have a big day coming in, tucking in, getting on the ball, and going a goal. Guys, Berhalter, man, I didn't expect this change coming into this game. On the other side of it, Minnesota, the big name, Darwin Quintero on that left side. As Harrison Offal tucks or pushes up, as he likes to do, look for Darwin Quintero to exploit that space. He's played a little central this year, but today he started on the left with Rasmus Schuler back in the middle. Keep an eye on that. Darwin Quintero hitting Columbus on the counter when Harrison Offal pushes up. Pretty experimental midfield from uh, Minnesota United right there. I, I do expect Columbus to dominate the ball, but as, as we just said, it, it comes down to can they can they get the final touch? Can they put the ball in the net? I like going with Nico Hansen. He extends the field more than, than Pedro Santos does, and I think that might give Iguain and Miram a little bit more space to, to use in between the lines. Maybe they can slip Hansen or, or Jossie Zardes in behind. Well, there is another team fighting for that final spot in the East, and that would be Montreal, who are taking on the Revs. A win paired with a Columbus loss, and Montreal are sitting pretty in the playoffs. And right now, we are going to send it out to Octavio Seguero, who is holding it down at Gillette Stadium with Remy Gard. It is MLS 2018 Decision Day presented by AT&T, and right now I'm joined by Coach Remy Gard. Coach this is a very tough game. This is a very important game for you guys. 
Talk about the preparation that you have, the mindset before this game. How important is this game for you? You said it, it's a very important one. But uh, as you know, in the previous weeks, we also had to play very important game. Some of them uh, we, we achieved what we wanted and uh, some of them we, we didn't. Then uh, we tried to, to correct what was wrong in that games. And uh, to be honest, uh, I feel my group uh, very determined and committed to the to the target that we have today, knowing that uh, we are playing uh, against a team that uh, needs to to finish well the season, like everywhere in MLS. But uh, I think we are ready for that. Before a game like this, is there anything specific that you're focused on? Like perhaps like the last time you faced them, you go through st uh, statistics. Uh, what is uh, some of the specific parts uh, about the preparation before this game? Yeah, like every, uh, every week we try to focus on what we want to do but uh, okay we focus also as well uh, on the specific specificity mm -hmm. of uh, our opponent mm -hmm. then uh, we know the, that these teams uh, of uh, new england have a lot and uh, as you said we we face them already two times then we know them quite well and we but we also watch what they have done the previous weeks because every team uh, improve or change a little the situation but they have strong characteristics that we try to to analyze and uh, we're going to see if we worked well or not <laughs> final then with everything on the line is that extra pressure or extra motivation for you and the group I think it's both. Uh, you know, I told to my player not to be uh, fragile at the beginning of the game, try to, to enjoy the situation. You know, we know that uh, it's 90 minutes that we have to win at the end, but uh, to have a chance. But, uh, you know, it's, there is no reason that uh, we could be less motivated than our opponent today. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. Well, a big X factor for Montreal, of course, their number 10, Nacho Piatti. One of the best number 10s in the league, but somebody who often gets overlooked in these conversations. Does he get enough credit for what he does for Montreal? Uh, first off, no. Second, I wouldn't buy too many jerseys of players in this league, but I would definitely rock a Piotti jersey. <laughs> he is so good. He thinks the game three to five steps ahead, but even when something doesn't work out, he's fluid and flexible enough to create things on his own uh, and, and to adapt to any situation. And if you haven't seen him play before, I highly... Uh, I suggest you go buy a ticket and watch him play. He's, he's excellent. He's, he's been awesome this year for the fourth straight year. Um, they're 11-5-4 and four in their last 20 games in MLS. They've been playing really good soccer. Uh, he, if he has a big game today, and like he could against this Revs team, they don't defend well. You could, once you break their press, you can get out in transition, and he is just deadly in transition. Um, it, look, he's, he's been spectacular, but it, they're going to need some help from, from Minnesota, and you can't count on Minnesota. It's, it's like to count on Chivas, Jimmy. You cannot count on them to get Why did you bring that up? I thought road. I had to put that away. <laughs> Box that back up. <laughs> well, guys, Atlanta is in the driver's seat for the Shield, but the other team in Shield contention, the New York Red Bulls, within a point of Atlanta, hot on their heels. They are at home where they have been so good this season. They're taking on Orlando. So right now we're going to send it out to Andrew Wiebe, who is standing by with Chris Armis. Hoping this is a good day for all of us. How about that? Yeah, man. You can't go. It's, it's a great day for the league, really. Yeah. You good? There we go. Andrew Wiebe here at Red Bull Arena with New York head coach Chris Armas. And coach, you look behind me, 2013-2015. Both those Supporter Shield banners were won on the final day of the regular season. Here we are again. A third in six years, perhaps. What would it mean to the club, to you, to win it here today? It would mean everything. It would mean everything to, not me, you know, me because it's for our supporters who show up now, what, 23 years into this. Um, it would mean a lot to, to the supporters and, and to our players and the families. Um, so, yeah, it's, in the end, it's, it's an important one. You got to win. If you do, you could make history, break that 70 point mark. But you got to pay attention to what's going down at BMO Field. I know how I'm going to. I will be on the app. How will you? Do you have a PR person in your ear? Is an assistant coach getting it through his ear? How will you follow the scores? We'll get some updates uh, on the sideline there. We, we think our fans are going to let us know. Um, but, yeah, we, we're going to have an eye on that one. So uh, let's go Toronto on the day and Listen, we'll see where it falls, but we'll, we'll be tuned into the, to the score over there because we, it's important for, for our decision-making in our game. 
When I think about historic seasons, I don't often think about two head coaches, and yet that's what New York Rebels have had this year. Jesse Marsh, you helped build this. Now you take it over and are the head coach. Where can we see your fingerprints as head coach this season in this team? Listen, with, with every person comes their own voice, their own ideas, what's in their minds and hearts. I mean, Jesse Marsh, it's, it's been incredible. We all know this. Uh, it's four years of a stamp he's put on this thing. And so much of what we've done, we've done together. So as much a part of Jess, I, I, you know, was doing things, I was there. And, and what we're doing here, he's with us. And listen, there's little things in there, some things on set pieces, some of the pressing schemes and a little bit with the ball. But I mean, for the most part, we're, we're in this together. Wins, ultimately. That's what you both share in this thing. Regular season, we know this team has had a ton of success. And yet the supporters, you, the players, we all know where you want to be. That's MLS Cup. I know you don't want to look ahead on this day, but I have to ask you about the ceiling of this team. What makes this team perhaps different than those before? What makes it capable of winning MLS Cup? Well, look, we, we, we have a lot of the same guys that were there in 15. Um, we think, uh, you know, those guys have been in the philosophy, been through, through all of this. We've been through the playoffs in the past. We've been through Open Cup runs this year, the, the, that and the Champions League uh, semifinal. So there's, there's been a lot building. Um, and then we've added Tim Parker and Kaku. And so are we the best we've ever been at being us, Red Bull football? And then as talented as we've been around the field, we're healthy. And we're going to make a real go at this, one game at a time. The press is on. For The Shield today, perhaps for more in the Audi 2018 MLS Cup playoffs. Back to you guys in the studio. Andrew asked Chris Armis how they can win MLS Cup. And one thing Armis has said throughout the year is that they need to evolve a little bit. They need to get better at new things. And here's the Red Bulls we're used to seeing right here. It's the most recognizable tactic in Major League Soccer. It's their press. The attackers queuing up to sprint at the opposing defense to put them under pressure to A, make sure they can't transfer the ball forward, but to B, to win the ball in good spots far up the field. Yeah, and you could see why they're doing it right here, Bob Arena. Like, they're really good at it. This has been their plan A really since 2015. Already one shield. Kind Kind of on the verge of another, but there needs to be a plan B. Yeah, they need to be good at something else along with the press, and that's what we're seeing here. There's sometimes in a game that you can't press. Maybe Bradley Wright Phillips can't sprint around anymore. Maybe the other team has broken the pressure, and you need to retreat. And that's something that Red Bulls have tried to get better at this year. And here we see a similar picture to the way we started the last video. The three forwards basically facing up with the opposing defense. What we saw there was a line of confrontation saying, we don't want to come get you. We're not going to actually press or defend you until you cross that line. And this takes a different skill set. Instead of sprinting at a player, you've got to defend in the middle of the field. You have to check your shoulders. You have to welcome pressure and be able to soak it up a little bit more than the Red Bulls have in the past. Yeah, and it's not just a defensive application. It's also an attacking application here. In the past, you've been able to bunker against the Red Bulls and kind of neutralize the press because if you don't care about building, they can't turn you over. But with this, they invite you forward, hopefully turn you over in midfield and have space to run into behind. That's the plan B that Bobby was talking about. That's the plan B that Chris Armas was talking about, and that's maybe their path to an MLS Cup. Yeah, and we know Red Bulls can press, but it's actually going to be the stuff in the middle of the field, the middle block that's going to determine their ability to win a trophy in the playoffs. All right, well, guys, we are running out of time, so before we leave, I'm going to do some rapid-fire questions with you guys. I'm talking one-word answers. Mm -hmm. we got to get this 42. show on the road. All right, who is going to take the Eastern Conference number six seed, Jimmy? Oh, uh, Columbus. Columbus. Crew FC. Columbus. All right. What about the West succeed? Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Galaxy. 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 Oh, my goodness. Top seed in the West will be? Sporting Kansas City. Sporting Kansas City. Good man. SKC. Ooh. All right. Sporting Kansas yeah. City. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and who will win the Supporters' Shield? Red Bulls. Ooh. Atlanta United. RBNY. Red Bulls. Oh, I should have said Vamos Metro. Metro. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that was great. You Did actually it. followed instructions. Uh, Absolutely kinda. amazing. I mean. That is going to do it for us. You guys, kickoff of all 11 games, of course, starting at 4.30 p.m. And remember, we're going to be back here at 7 p.m. to wrap it all up and look ahead to the Audi MLS Cup playoffs. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the soccer.